Hello again and welcome to part three of my grade 10 uh, RCM piano intervals overview. My name is Anna Vavalova. I'm a pianist and I'm teacher. I've been successfully preparing my students for this exam with 100% results on their intervals without an exception. So I want to share with you my knowledge and in this particular video, I want to talk to you about um, the sense of the interval. So in the first video, we talked about part two, we talked about the, which song goes with which interval. And this one I'm talking about, what feeling do we get when we hear intervals? That works more when intervals are presented in solid form. <laughs> Because it's very hard to hear a song when the interval played solid well for some students okay so just like we know that music why is music created music created to express what a composer feels to express what he feels about himself about the world so it inspires us to feel something so music can be happy written in a major key sad right in a minor key it can be also kind of um, descriptive like say describing some kind of a magical event okay it could be so many things it could be anything so what we're going to do we're going to feed on that emotional impact that we get when we hear a certain sonorities a certain combination of notes together and we will try to see how it will help us to hear an interval so i identified several feelings that several groups of feelings that i get when i hear certain intervals for example there are happy intervals okay which are major third and major sixth sad intervals minor third minor sixth some people hear sixes a little bit differently but i'm just telling you how it is with me and my students usually um relate to these particular associations so we have major and minor then we have the odd sounding intervals for example we have this minor second which sounds smudgy then we have minor now a minor uh, no major seventh also smudgy but but wide wide smudgy then we have the minor ninth so we have those three smudgy something out of tune unpleasant sounding intervals and then there is also your tritone okay so uh, diminished fifth segmented fourth so how to distinguish between uh, the intervals in that group I, I will talk in a minute I'm just gonna present the other ones that are left behind so then then we have these intervals that are they're unusual by by themselves they stand out because they're very unusual so we have major second major second we very often want to confuse with minor second so for this one we have to be careful that we hear that was minor second we need to hear that that is it's almost like it says it's a it's pleasant close close two notes together it's not as unpleasant as minor second minor second is very smudgy if you hear them side by side it's easy to recognize but when you hear it alone you need to be able to say does it still sound good to you major second usually does and then we have major nines so major nines we need to think about as the widest interval like if it sound completely what on earth was that it's probably major nines that's what i tell my students if it sounds completely 
unrecognizable that you can even cannot even begin to try it's probably major nines okay and then we have very interesting interval that i found it's a minor seventh we think that minor intervals sound more sad minor sad you need to remember that minor seventh does not sound sad because it's it outlines the dominant seventh chord so dominant seventh is very happy major and we're so used to that well at least i'm so used to that that it doesn't sound sad to me so you need to remember that if you hear an interval that is up that is wide far away it cannot be a sixth it definitely not major seventh it's probably a minor seventh so that's the sense i get so it's a happy wider interval it's not major six major six is very very typical very obviously happy interval okay and then that all right so how to recognize the intervals within the group well you have to listen how far the notes are away from each other for instance let's see if you have this an odd group of the smudgy intervals like minor second uh, tritone major seventh and minor ninth so there's four intervals in that smudgy group okay so what you need to hear is the distances between notes so of course you can recognize that right they're close together then this is a little bit further apart and then we have the and this goes into an octave and the ninth falls into an octave so you need to hear how far the notes are away from each other inside of this group same with major minor group so we have two intervals in each major so you need to hear notes oh that was close and that was far away you know what we forgot we forgot about perfect intervals uh, there's so many okay so not that there's so many perfect intervals just there's so many intervals so we no we shouldn't forget so perfect intervals are the perfect fourth perfect fifth and octave okay so how do we hear them well perfect interval sounds to me um, very stable also they sometimes they can sound hollow like they're missing something like perfect fifth perfect and then you need to decide either perfect fifth perfect fourth well then when that's what comes in you will need to try to play a song in your head which one is that which hollow is that da, 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 da. or twinkle twinkle okay so perfect octave you can recognize is i hope is the easiest one but sometimes students confuse perfect fifths and perfect octave okay so be careful with those ones okay i think we've covered them all so get a sense of the interval happy sad kind of a smudgy then we have the group of unusual which is major second major ninth and major minor seventh and uh and try to hear how far the notes are away from each other okay so we can go over to summarize the groups let's say happy group it's major third major six sad group minor third minor six stable uh the perfect intervals perfect fifth perfect fourth and octave then we have the sort of smudgy uh group is minor second uh, tritone which is diminished fifth segmented fourth major seventh minor ninth and then we have the last group of the odd sounding intervals it's my uh, major second okay that you have to be careful major seventh you have to be careful and what else oh yes the major ninth because it's so far away so sometimes you can just think okay that's an odd interval i don't know what that is so far away i cannot even begin that probably your major ninth okay so that was a quick 
summary on how to hear intervals based on their sound. Ideally, you should use the combination of the first method of recognizing the song with recognizing the sonority of it. So you can use two of them. And then in the next video, I'm going to talk about the third way um, in part, part four, a third way how to recognize the intervals, how to train yourself to uh, recognize the intervals. And we will try to sing intervals if we know the song. So you can sing with me and then you can try to do it uh, yourself. Okay, so see you in the next video.